We are in this beautiful Spanish place. It's called Finca Monasterio. We are in this little uh, rural village, which is called San Martin de Tesorillo in southern Spain. And now the team is in the uh, preparation uh, for the whole editorial shoot. I'm going to tell you a bit what we are going to plan to do today. So, fashion editorial shoot. Six photos, different places. I'm going to base on the natural light, but perhaps I'm going to do add some strobes. My model is very tall, beautiful and young. We've got gorgeous designs, um, gorgeous uh, gowns and outfits. And I'm going to use the location to build my story. So what's the difference between a single photo and editorial, fashion editorial? Basically, it's a set of few pictures which are going to be published in some magazine. Editorial is a bit different than commercial shoot because you've got clothes from different designers, you can show whatever you want, whatever is in your mind, uh, you get to choose the place, you get to choose the model, and you get to choose the idea. Editorial needs to have some flow. So if you're looking at the pictures, they need to be interesting. Let's imagine you're opening a fashion magazine and you're flipping the pages, and it, the story needs to be engaging. So when you look at the first page, then you want to jump to the other one. And it's very important to do to build the whole set very dynamically. So let's say I've got the full body, that the other picture is going to be portraiture, uh, the poses need to vary, everything needs to be very dynamic and interesting. I want to show you what's a mood board story and why do you need it. So basically it's a set of pictures that you can see here, uh, showcasing what's in my head, what I want to do for the makeup, here you can see, and what I want to do for the hair. It's basically like, a, like some kind of samples for my team. Uh, what's in my head, what I want to do. Why is it important? Because uh, like us creatives, we're thinking in terms of pictures. If I'm saying something and trying to explain with my words, sometimes uh, basically my team uh, can misunderstand me. So showing pictures, the more I show, the better it is, the better they get it. With the makeup, we start something like, let me show you, okay? I think we've started something like this. Pink powder blush, something like this. So she like, look, like girlish, yeah? Uh -huh. In terms of outfits as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So you know, two of these, okay? Mm -hmm. Unless there is a quick, something quickly, so uh, what you could do in the meantime. Because we want to shoot in the same scene. So two yeah. shots at the same scene, then two shots at the same scene, different outfits and two. So is, we're not uh, wasting time moving all the light and everything. Okay, okay. so if we're starting softer, we can start with this round because I think it goes softer. softer. Yes. And then, as we go, I make and then we're going to add makeup and decide. Exactly. So be, okay, I think so. Okay, so I need two looks basically for, for the natural makeup, okay? Mm -hmm. Then these two, and then maybe we add, depending on the colors, what uh, Stanislav will have. Maybe we'll, change up the lip. Also. Maybe change up the lip, maybe something stronger, so maybe add something bolder a bit at, at the end. Yeah, but also keep in mind that I'm shooting both full body and also close ups, okay? okay. Because I don't know what I'm to use, okay? Mm -hmm. So we want to be prepared for everything, okay? okay? So basically, that's it, yeah? The thing which you're probably most interested in is how do I work with color wheel on the set. I brought today a, like a paper version of color wheel. I'm going to walk you through my thinking process, how do I set it up in terms of colors and how do I think. So, first of all, I need to determine what kind of colors I've got set in stone. So what things I cannot change. So let's say it's a, it's a model, model's red hair. So, I'm picking color orange, yes. So this is my model's red hair, which basically is not going to change throughout the shoot. And imagine I've got a red dress. So I've got these two colors, okay? Can you see them? And then I need to create some harmony. I mean, I don't need to, but the best way, I mean, to achieve the best effect is to create some harmony. What options do I have? So the first option is to keep everything close to each other and shoot find a location in very similar familiar colors. It's called analogous harmony. So I'm looking for the warm colors around me. If I don't have warm colors, so let's say I shoot in something neutral like white or black or gray, okay? This is one option. What's my other option? 
So I'm just looking at this wheel. Let me just turn it around. I've got two colors which are determined. I'm not going to move them. So it's my dress. It's my dress. It's the model's uh, hair color. And I want to achieve some nice symmetry, some harmony. So I'm looking down here. So these two colors, this one here, and I'm going to get so-called split complementary harmony. So I've got two colors and the opposite one is this beautiful, like it's blue-green. Yeah, so this is another option. So we need to look in my surroundings for this color. Well, blue-green color, maybe I could go outside to the green area and maybe I could change lately, later in post-production to this kind of green, but to tell the truth, it would look fake. So it's not an option for me. What's the other option? So thing which I, I would probably do during my shoot today, if I, if I will have a red dress, I will find a pair for each of these colors. So imagine my orange hair will have some blue in the background. Okay, so this is a complementary color. And my red dress will, will have complementary color, green, something green. So tree, I don't know, whatever green I've got. And I found this kind of place which has a bit of green and a bit of white. I couldn't find anything which is also blue because this location has, uh, doesn't have any sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot red dress, ginger model with a bit of green and a bit of white. And later in post-production, I'm going to add blue in my highlights. This is how I'm going to achieve a harmony. What I did now is basically I briefed the crew what we're going to do, what's the plan. They know what kind of makeup to put, what kind of dresses. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare my scene. I'm going to think about the lights, okay? And once the model is ready, you're going to see what exactly step by step I'm going to do in order to get the best light out of the scene. Let me tell you a few tips on how to mix natural light with strobes so it looks natural. First of all, you need to expose to natural light. So imagine your model standing in a setting. And what you need to do is you take the exposure, you expose to the background, so the background is not overexposed and not underexposed. When you're happy with the background, the model is supposed to be a little bit too dark. Only then you add a strobe. And you can start from the lowest power and looking at the, at the outcome, you can basically add more power. This is how I usually work. In terms of the positioning of the light, I like to uh, let it indirectly. What does it mean? Imagine you've got a model standing in front of you, so you don't put the light straight onto her face. It's just you move it slightly toward the camera so she gets the light only kind of like feathered. So the light is a bit more softer. This is the way where you can kind of like cheat that on the location you've got natural light. So what I see here is basically things we, we just need to adjust. In terms of light, I'm not entirely happy about her face, how it's lit. Uh, so I've got two options, either move her back so the light is like nicely lit on her, on her face or the other, other option is to add a strobe. Let's see how it goes, okay? I need to tidy up my frame, see what works, what doesn't, okay? So let's see again. Just no pauses, no pauses for now. Just let me see. Let me just try. Mm -hmm. Okay, again. Okay, I'll add maybe a little bit something from front, okay? So I'll ask Dorota to put one umbrella in here. Okay, in terms of posing, Laura. I don't want you to look uh, elegant. I want to break it. I want to do something like, I don't care. Maybe walk, you will try a lot of things, okay? Maybe later we'll lean on the, on the pillar later. Maybe you can somehow, I like these, um, these palm trees. So what you can do, you somehow can 
come into them or hide behind them, okay? So it's not so obvious. We're not, we're not here to show the clothes, it's editorial, okay? Just, just, yes, yes, it's okay. Okay, and maybe s give me a step back, okay? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I will need the big umbrella, okay? How does it sound? Okay, let me see, is it hot? Again, it's not about the clothes, it's about so, somehow like, yes, yes, that's it, something like this. This would be awesome, that would be awesome. If you're starting your adventure with strobes, I'd recommend you start with one light and master only one light, okay? There are a lot of options. You can achieve absolutely amazing effects with one light only. You can obviously change the sizes of the modifiers. The bigger it is, the softer it is. Uh, the smaller it is, the, sh the har harsher it is. Also, the distance obviously um, influences the quality of the light. Mm, but here is a tip where to place the light. My favorite setup is 45 degrees uh, from the model's face and 45 degrees up. So why do I put my um, light above the model's head? Because our eyesight, our eyes are um, kind of like um, used to seeing our faces in the sunlight, which comes usually from above. So if all of a sudden you put your light on the mo like on the same level uh, of the model's face, it will look awkward, it will lo look unnatural. Obviously, there are some types of, especially in uh, fashion photography, uh, type of editorials that you can put your light wherever you want, but it needs to be done consciously. There needs to be like kind of style, uh, so you need to do it on purpose. Before I even start shooting, I use this color checker uh, passport uh, I've got x rights but uh, now you can find it in the different brand, which is called Calibrite. I'm going to use it for later profiling your camera. I'm going to show you in the next video how, how to do it exactly. But I need to make sure with every outfit, I've got the photograph with this little thing, okay? Is the lamp? Yeah. Yes, okay. Let me just check it, okay. That's perfect. And further away, just in case, okay? So I've got in the same exact, okay, that's perfect. And that will be enough. Just make sure you don't have your fingers on it, okay? That's beautiful. Prolonged leg, your le uh, legs, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Just give me tiny changes, okay, in the meantime. My name is Joanna Kustra. I'm fashion, beauty, and portrait photographer. Currently, I'm based in Spain, and this is where I live and work. However, I come from Poland. And let me tell you how I came being from a small rural uh, village in Poland to being here. So for a long time, I've been playing piano and oboe. Why is it important? It is important because when I moved to study in Krakow in bigger city, all of a sudden, when I studied languages, I lacked this creative uh, vibe. So what happened? I took camera in my hands and I started to photograph my friends. When my friends were already kind of like angry at me and said, okay, don't bother me anymore, I went to a modeling agency and started to test with fresh models. I was very lucky because at the beginning of my career, uh, I got my first commercial assignment. And that was a day or that was a time where when the idea came to my head that I, I could actually be a professional fashion photographer. What I was doing in Krakow, I was testing a lot with modeling agencies, obviously everything for free. I was learning and learning and learning and I was taking like hundreds of thousands of pictures and I loved it. It was not only my work, but not as much work as a passion. Uh, but I thought at some point I need to learn, I need to learn more, I want to know more. Like Krakow was not enough for me. So I decided to move to London in order to assist other photographers. And this is the place where I learned the most by assisting. And actually I wasn't doing anything creative there. I was like making coffee, uh, I don't know, holding something uh, for a photographer. I was like fifth of six assistant. Uh, but this was the place where I learned how to talk to the client, what's the dynamic in the commercial, in the editorial shooting. And in the meantime, I was obviously shooting something for myself and already earning as a photographer. And slightly chin down. Mm -hmm. Okay, slightly turn to, uh, face towards me. 
you can look at me, this leg was slightly even more apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and look at me, I need movement. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I need some movement. That's it. Beautiful. Beautiful. And not look at, don't look at me. Just close your eyes slightly and chin up. Oh, that's something like this. And slightly away with this hand. So somehow like here. Does it make sense? Yeah. And leg even more, even more, even more. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Beautiful. Uh-huh. That's it, beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Hold it. Grab again, these flowers, grab again. So there is a different, so just, just hold them here. Maybe a little loosen, loosen up. Slightly, so this hand is kind of like bent. I mean, so it's not like this. Just put it again. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Gorgeous. And like push your body, ex like, yeah. Uh-huh. That's it, beautiful. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've got it, okay? okay. That's it, thank you very much. What I've been doing in London, I was basically shooting only in studio. Like imagine London weather, raining, frogs all the time. I was trying to master one light. And to tell the truth, I didn't like what I was getting. So when I put a strobe, it was just totally different than what I saw. So what I did, I started to shoot with continuous lighting and I absolutely mastered it. Uh, London was a great place because it gave me opportunity to go to all the galleries, all the places where I could see art. And it inspired me so much that I decided to shoot uh, painterly style photographs um, and th this, this project, which I did, like based on paintings, occurred to be very, very successful. It was published in many magazines, covers, it won many awards. And basically this little only shoot kind of like decided what my career is going to be, which way is going to, to go. Because all my clients were asking me for this type of style. In the meantime, I was shooting still some commercials, I was mastering studio and obviously the main point of London was to assist. After a few years, I was a bit kind of like tired with London, with the busy lifestyle and I decided to move here in Spain, here towards the Spain. Uh, Southern Spain, can you imagine beautiful weather, sunshine, no studio at all. All my knowledge from London, working in studio circumstances with all the lights and everything, I needed to kind of like uh, put into the uh, bag and start learning natural light because it was a lot to things to a lot of things to learn how to handle uh, I don't know the midday sunlight or how to shoot the whole day in order to get this soft beautiful look that was a challenge however at some point I was happy with the natural light but I thought, okay, I need to chase the natural light so I need to look where the best light is and then I thought, hmm, what if I add a strobe? What if I, I want to shoot in this place, my natural light is not enough, but I'm going to add a strobe. And this was also like a breakthrough for me to use strobes in outside, outdoors, in like outdoor spaces with the sun. And since I really like natural light, I never wanted to look the, to, to have a look like unnatural, yeah, if you know what I mean. So I always strive to have this uh, strobe looking naturally and this was something what helped me immensely uh, because I could go to any location any place any time I could add a strobe and still use natural light as a base light and have wonderful effects I'm pretty sure we've got one full body shot but just in case because I don't know how the story will uh, resolve itself or has, how it's going to be built I'm going to shoot also close-ups so I always make sure I do both because, well, I never know what's going to be useful, okay? Uh, so now let's go and shoot the beauty one. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's beautiful. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Now I, need, I love the frame. Everything is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, stay there. I think this is what I need. It's absolutely amazing. Closer, hand closer to your, uh, this one, mm -hmm, a bit closer to your body. Beautiful, let me see, let me see, let me see, it's coming. Uh-huh. 
Is it coming? That's it. Chin up, chin up, chin up. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, a few more, just in case. Just slightly, just give me small changes with the flag, like little flowers, so beautiful. And look at me, gorgeous. And look at me, beautiful. And look at me again. And closer, and just hide this, this little finger so it's not pointing. That's it. Just play with it so it's not like okay. only one, okay? It's awesome, I've got it. Uh huh. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Again, face towards me. That's it, gorgeous. Okay, close your eyes and uh, look at me fresh. Oh, that was good. Oh my God, you just put your head up and look at me like this. Look at me like this, like from above, from above. That's it. Absolutely stunning. Okay, guys, so I would like to show you what kind of photos I did today uh, during a photo shoot. I'm going to walk through, through all of them and tell you my thinking. So first of all, I was just testing my settings. The model was standing up. I wasn't changing literally anything. You can see on the left-hand side uh, my exact settings. I'm testing, testing, testing. I'm deciding about the pose, about the, about the place, as you can see now. And then, when I'm quite happy with the ambient light and how the background is looking, I decide, look at her face. Her face uh, doesn't have enough light. So what do I do? I bring a big white umbrella on the left-hand side. I put it up, it's exactly here. Let me show you before and after. So this is uh, before the umbrella, this is with the umbrella. You can see clearly on her face uh, how it's lit. Uh, and then I'm happy with the light. So here I use color checker, uh, then to profile it later in post-production. And I come back to taking photos. And as you can see, I'm trying to find a pose. I'm trying to warm up the model because this is my first setup. Uh, she's very uncomfortable with these shoes, so we will probably change them in the meantime. Uh, so I'm cropping differently. I'm finding some other angles. I'm asking her to do different posing. I'm trying to direct her, di direct her um, again, again, again. I'm probably in the meantime looking at my screen. I'm just going to forward here because they're pretty the same. And I think I look at my screen, I'm pretty happy uh, with one or two of the photos. So what I do, I change exactly here. Here, here we go. I change to different lens, 85 millimeters. This is a portrait. And then I realize, look at the bottom here, that actually I shot in JPEGs. I did a mistake. And thankfully I can redo these photos. So I change them to um, raw files. And then I look at, at her face. Again, I judge the light because my setting changed slightly. And I feel that her, la that her face is lit, it's basically too much light. So I take out this rope and I add, here we go, only white reflector. And I'm doing a lot of photos here. So I'm happy with the light. I direct her a bit. I want to frame with this leaf and I just carry on. I'm going through all the portraits and later I come back to the previous set and I'm basically retaking photos in raw files. And I ask her again to do this kind of posing. Normally I would probably do more poses, probably two or three more poses, different poses, but because of the lack of time, I just managed to do one. Also, I could preview my pictures on the screen, so I was pretty happy with the outcome. One or two photos were great, so I decided, okay, so let's move to the next set. Cut. I think it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like this. Oh. Yeah, it took me like a few minutes to figure it out. No, 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 just, I, I like you it. You want it I like to be lower? lower? No. no, I want it to be higher. No, no, I, I think it's higher, it's nice. It's nothing visible, no worries. Do you have holes in your ears? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, 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 you can, you can put it like this. I like, put, it, I like yeah. put it like this and show your ears. I love your ears, absolutely. I'm in love with your ears. <laughs> or like this. This goes better with yeah. the earrings, but it might yeah. be a bit much with that. No, no, skip it. Like, okay. Or maybe if you want for just for the beauty show. So for maybe the fashion put and put it on for a different photo. Just a little bit. I'm very lucky to have this model today. She's here on holiday. How lucky I am. She's signed to a modeling agency. She's very fresh. 
She only started this year, so I think she's mod she's been modeling for a couple of months. And she's on holiday in Spain. And well, lucky me. Let me tell you a bit how to organize a shoot. First of all, you need a model. Where to find a model? The easiest way is to go to the agency, modeling agency, and ask for a model. Obviously, they will give you at the beginning aspiring models or models who don't have their books filled. They don't have enough pictures. And they are still learning how to be a professional model. And obviously, this is a good scenario because you're learning, they're learning, and you can both kind of like uh, be at the same page. However, it's good to build a good relation with a model agency. They will ask you for very simple tests at the beginning because for the agency the main thing is to show the model in a natural way. So if you want to do and shoot some crazy editorial or, I don't know, crazy styling, they won't probably give you a model. So at the beginning you need to do a few very simple photo shoots in order they will give you a model, they will trust you basically. You build with them a trust, um, they will trust you to give a model for something stronger and something more crazy. But what if you live in the rural places like me and you don't have modeling agencies around you? There is another option. Uh, there is a website called modelmanagement.com where you can look for models yourself. These are usually aspiring models or ones who they're not signed to the agency. I think it's a decent web website. You can look for models worldwide. There are like options to look for, I don't know, height, uh, models height or age, uh, ethnicity. It's very helpful. So the last option, how to find a model, is basically Instagram. What I do here in Spain, in southern Spain, because I don't have modeling agency, I go to Instagram and I look for other creatives in my area, like photographers, designers, uh, makeup artists, and I look who they work with, locally, obviously. And I follow them, and I build some kind of my own little network of models and other creatives. Yes, just until the elbow. Is the other one under the sleeve? Looks cool, no? Just for the test. Okay, okay. Just for sure, no suffering for you. Maybe a little from over there. No, 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 you stay like this. You just give me whatever you, you gave there, okay? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. I'm sorry. Beautiful. Okay, let me see it. I'm just double checking. It's perfect. You just keep, do keep going. Okay, let's see. Gorgeous. Okay, someone could take a look closer at the screen, what's going on up there, okay? Yeah, now it's. Ah, it's too much. That's too much. Okay. Something like this, no? Yeah. In between. Yeah. I think it's perfect, okay. Oh no, it's changing again. Please don't. Please don't. Beautiful. Just keep hanging around this curtain. Beautiful. Very feminine. Oh, changed. Oh, it's overexposed. It's going to be like this, yes. And now it, cha it changed again, yes? The sun is changing. Just grab both of them and kind of like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. Beautiful, love it. And just give me with these angles of your face. This is so amazing. How is it looking, this one? Is this it's looking much better. Yeah. It's looking much better, no? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. I love it. Yes? So let me tell you how to find a team. Before you find a team, I would recommend you shooting only with a model. Why is it good to shoot only with a model? Because you don't have so much pressure to deliver good images. I've been photographing for 15 years and it still happens that I take a model herself on the shoot without the team and I test. And this is a great opportunity to improvise, to learn and to experiment. I'm still doing it. You can put a natural makeup, you can ask a model to put makeup by herself and source the clothing from her wardrobe and obviously you don't have very crazy outfits but you can uh, play with colors, with light, 
you can learn a lot and you can experiment. This is a very important thing, experiment. So where to find a team? In my case, that would be Instagram. So I'm looking for creatives around me, locally. I'm looking for people who'd work to cooperate with me. I contact them, I ask them whether they want to shoot, are they available for commercial, for test shooting, and what are their rates? Sometimes people test with you for free only to build their portfolios. Energy. Oh, that's, that's nice. Just keep it up, keep up. Yeah, beautiful. Just legs. I need something else with legs, okay? Doesn't work for me. Just, just change it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. Oh, that's nice. Give me again with your hand up. Uh-huh. A little more light. Let me see a little more light. Uh-huh. Beautiful. And can you grab with the other hand somewhere back there? Or just pull it forward somewhere, yeah. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Again, light is changing. That's nice, that's nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's also nice, kind of like uh, facing this way and like holding here. Uh-huh. Yeah, for example, like do whatever you feel. And swap your hands, I mean, uh, the one which is, yes, exactly, thank you, you're reading my mind. Absolutely amazing, beautiful. And try if you're not looking at me, like looking away somewhere. Beautiful, somewhere just close to me, but not so beautiful. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just analyze quickly. I'd like to see them, what's going on. Like quickly what I've got, what I don't. I think this one is gorgeous, this one, this one, look at this, just very simple. I'm pretty sure we've got it, you know. Okay, close up again. So we sit on a chair now. Take a chair somewhere here, exactly the same place as you. And somehow, uh, I need to see this glove. So somehow sit, I will, I will show you how. Wait a second. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I want something a bit, uh, stand up, stand up. Something more, which one is it? So something more like, more like. Okay. So you've got the glove here. Is it the, the, the same glove? Yes. Yeah. Oh, the sound, and this one we need lower now, uh, Dorota, if you don't mind. So this is basically, I'm cropping you. This is more like a, mm, not a headshot, but still. Okay. Uh, and I need this one a bit closer, the other one. Is it possible? Okay. Let me see, quickly. I'm just going to check the light. Okay, the pose does, it, it's not going to work this way, somehow differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe even, you don't, need to, you don't need to lean on this, maybe even forward, like you, uh, your, favorite, uh, your favorite pose is like, yes, I would love to do this, yes. Look at this, look at this, see? I told you. Uh-huh. This is just, I need to frame it nicely. She's amazing at this one, I knew. It's just, I need to, okay, lower light. This is nice. I just need to... That's it, okay. No, 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 keep it like this, keep it like this. How about, how about the chair? Shall we leave it like this? Yes. It's okay, yes? Yeah. No, you're better. <laughs> you're better, okay? Stunning. Stunning, 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 beautiful. And just give me options. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. Stay there. Beautiful. Amazing. Okay, just let shoot, let shoot, let shoot. You're doing great, yeah. You can just put it even down, I don't mind, okay? Yeah. Uh huh. Stay there. I just need to think how to frame it. Ooh. Do, do it, do it like this, do it, do it. Beautiful. Beautiful, gorgeous. Just give me more, give me more. Beautiful. We need to double check that we've got code checker, okay? So hold this one like you hold, like you, like you held, okay? And let me just frame it. Let me see if I've got it straight on. Again, just look at me. And just without, like even breathing, give me the same pose, okay? Uh-huh. 
Beautiful. Stay there. Where do you source clothing? Again, the easiest way would be to find a person so-called fashion stylist or wardrobe stylist. But it's not easy to find that kind of person. If you live in a bigger city, you must, you can have some more luck because there are more stylists in bigger cities. However, in rural areas like mine, you need to be a bit more creative. So one option is to contact fashion designers by yourself. So again, you go to Instagram, you look uh, for creatives, you do your networking and you contact them. I need these clothes, I need these uh, outfits for my photo shoot. This is one option. The other option is, uh, which is um, very commonly used in, this, uh, in fashion industry, you go basically shopping. You go shopping to high street, you buy clothes and then you return them. If you live in bigger city, obviously I would look for wardrobe stylists. What they do, they take care of all the outfits, all the clothing, accessories and sometimes even setting. If you work for a magazine, uh, you would ask a magazine for a so-called pull letter. It's a document that states and confirms that you're going to shoot for a magazine. If you've got this document, pull letter, then for a stylist, it's very easy to source the clothing from so-called showrooms. It's beautiful. Stay there. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, not touching your face, like kind of like flying. Just move this hand, move this hand, okay? So it's, I need options. Beautiful. You can put both, both of them like this. That's it. And not touching your, in front of your face, so this way. Nothing else, that's it. And I love the shoulder, what you did. It changes a lot, like this way, that way. Beautiful. Stunning. Stunning, 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 beautiful. I think I'm losing the light, so I think that's it. No? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's amazing. Ultimo, ultimo, oh, last one, last one, last one. Last one. That's nice. Close your eyes. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And now look at me. Beautiful. Okay, that's it. Give me. So in here you can see the second setup. Again, I'm putting my model back to my main light, I mean to my sunlight, and I'm exposing first to the background. As you can see here, I'm pretty happy with the background, how is it lit. So what I'm going to do, because my, her face and her body is slightly underexposed, I'm going to put a big white umbrella. Uh, I really like soft lighting. Uh, here we go. Here's, here, here you can see this umbrella. So I'm not going to exaggerate with this effect, just slightly, a little bit, like probably one of the lowest, lowest power probably. And I shoot. I'm happy with the light. So I shoot, I try to find the pose. You can see here. I'm happy with the light. I try different, different uh, settings, angles. And then all of a sudden, Without changing anything, my uh, setup and my basically exposure changes. Why? Because the sun changes. The sun comes out of the uh, clouds and it hides. So I need to expose again. I need to um, kind of like find again uh, my perfect balance between uh, strobe light and a flashlight. So uh, strobe light, sorry, and natural light. Here you can see actually what picture shouldn't look like. So this is like not nicely balanced. The, obviously this is like exposure perfect, but I don't like this uh, strong strobe in, in the front. So again, I'm looking by changing my shutter speed and aperture. Again, the sun is coming out. So it's overexposing my background. Before I realized, here we go. I took a few pictures and then I realized, then again, my expose, you can see my battle here. Sometimes you've got these kind of like conditions and you need to change it constantly. I absolutely love this effect. This one, when she's standing, it's slightly overexposed the background and it's perfect on her face. I'm going forward, forward, forward. I like it, I like everything. The model is posing great. Then again, the sun hides uh, behind the cloud. And again, I lose exposure. As you can see, this is a battle. 
also, I think I take a lot of pictures because I like this, this style, this outfit. Stanislav is a person responsible for styling and every single set is, every single outfit is from different designer. Okay, again, sun is hidden, sun comes out. I need to change my uh, settings and I look for the, like a perfect balance between strobe and natural light. Let me just forward quicker. I do poses, I'm happy with the light. Okay, okay. Let me just do it quicker for a lot of them. Okay, what happens here? So I decided to try another pose and I put the model in a chair, she sits down. Instantly, I need to lower down my light because it was too high, obviously, too, too, it was too, like, too much above over her head. Uh, I'm adjusting everything. Let me just see close up of one photo. Now you can take a look at her, at her face here. Oh yeah, it's perfect, actually perfect sh uh, sh sharpness, uh, focus. Mm, I ask the makeup artist to do freckles. Uh, makeup art artist was Anna Scott. I mean, is Anna Scott, yeah. Uh, she did these lovely freckles and this natural makeup and she followed my instructions. So she did exactly what I asked her to do uh, and what I had on my mood board. And I'm shooting this scene. I'm just not deciding whether I want close up or full body. Everything is shot with 50 millimeters and try, try different poses. The model is absolutely amazing. Uh, she's not experienced, but just before the shoot, I took her for a small test. Basically, we shot in front of our flat for 15 minutes with natural makeup. And that's why I decided to take her because I knew that her posing is very natural and she can do it and pull it off with the whole outfit. Cut. It's very, very hot. Everyone is basically dripping. So we need to take a break. Everyone needs to eat, drink, and then we are going to think and talk about the next uh, scene. Let's see what's, what, we, what we've got for you. Okay, I'm really excited. Maybe come a little bit closer here, okay? Somewhere in between, don't lean, don't lean, okay? Not passport, not yet, because I'm not happy with the light yet. I mean like, uh-huh, let me see, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I need you somewhere back a bit. So somewhere in between, no, 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 somewhere, or maybe somewhere here. Mm -hmm. You don't need to, or close a bit the door, the whole door. We need a man. Okay, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And somehow like, let's see how it goes, okay? Because now I've got not, I don't have enough blue, so we need to close it. If it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's nice. I'm double checking. Nice, isn't it? Okay, let's close the door a bit. It's a bit too, no, 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 close this way. Sorry, I'm just thinking somewhere here and beautiful gorgeous 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 you don't need to look at me look forward like totally forward beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. gorgeous stunning 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 mm -hmm. that's amazing I'm just doing different crops, okay? I'm checking what's, what works, what doesn't. Beautiful. Uh-huh. So, I'm quite happy with my light. So let's just use the checker, okay? Hold it for a second in front of you. Don't touch the colors, okay? For later, we're going to use it for color profiling, okay? Give me a smile. Beautiful. So later, 
Also, we're going to use it to color correct, okay? I love it. Beautiful. Cross the legs, do whatever you feel. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's gorgeous. Love it. You don't need to look at me all the time, remember? Stay there. That's beautiful. They're super visible, beautiful. Uh huh. Gorgeous. Uh huh. Beautiful. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Uh huh. Beautiful. And I want also to try uh, inside. So buy this the other filler. How does it sound? Okay. Let me just uh, uh, open this one. You're starting to go a little bit forward. Makes sense. I get this question a lot. What type of lenses do I use while shooting fashion and beauty? So my two favorite lenses are 50 millimeters and 85 millimeters. 50 I use for full body, while 85 for portraits. Sometimes happens that I shoot, like today on the shoot, uh, portraits with 50 millimeters. What it does, basically it elongates the body and in fashion it's basically allowed to kind of like uh, do the wider angle on the face. While shooting normal people, I would rather go higher, so 80 or even 100 for headshots. Why you should focal length more than 100, 150 fashion? Because basically it shortens the body. So if you imagine a family photographer taking a child into a field and shooting 200 focal length or 300 focal length, uh, basically it shortens the, the, the person uh, while blurring the background. In fashion, usually we don't do this. There are exceptions where you want to uh, kind of like do this style of paparazzi, maybe the model is in the city and someone is kind of like peeking behind and shooting, but this is in certain situations. Usually the wider it is, the better for the model because the body is longer, uh, legs are longer. Uh-huh, extra. So what's interesting about shooting in Spain? So first of all, there are a lot of beautiful locations. How to get to know them? I think you need to travel and basically do a lot of sightseeing. This is how I do it. I travel with my family, I take photos with my phone and I file them to my computer. And whenever I need something, some location for my photo shoot, I've got this folder, I go there, I'll scroll through and I choose whatever is fitting for this particular photo shoot. So what are the challenges if you want to shoot in Spain? First of all, it's the weather. In some areas, especially in bigger cities, uh, the temperatures during the season, which lasts uh, roughly from May to September, September uh, they're basically unbearable. You cannot shoot during the day, let's say in Seville. The other problem is basically the sun because Throughout the day, you've got very hard and harsh sun and you need to somehow accommodate and kind of like be flexible where and how to, how to manage it. It's very easy to find free locations, free kind of like places to shoot in outside the season. So starting from end of September until beginning of May, because many hotels, many places where there are tourists visiting are not as busy and are willing to uh, cooperate with photographers uh, for exchange for some social, um, social presence. Spanish lifestyle is a bit different than in bigger cities like London or New York. Uh, people here, especially in Andalusia, are a little bit more laid back and they need a little more time to kind of like uh, chit chat, to get to know each other. So organizing a photo shoot in Spain, especially southern Spain, you need to keep in mind that the shoots need to be longer. What's the difference between shooting in Andalusia, so rural places, than in Barcelona and Madrid? So basically, well, the way of working in Barcelona is more similar to London, New York, Warsaw, or any bigger city. While here, in rural places, uh, you need to accommodate, you need to think of a bit longer time for the whole production, for the whole photo shooting. In Spain, almost all locations are for free. So you've got beaches, you've got mountains, forests, 
especially in Andalusia, you've got a lot of variable, various, beautiful locations. There are certain places like botanic gardens or some of the hotels, they will charge you and they've got set prices for their uh, production. So you can contact them and basically ask them. Costa del Sol is a unique place because there are a lot of nationalities. So organizing a photo shoot, you need to keep in mind that people will be from all over the world. They will be very international. And you're going to see today during the photo shoot that we communicate in English because there are people coming from Romania, from Russia, from Poland, all over the, all over the places. Tak, tu este cinturón, tengo sí. que retocar, ¿no? No pasa nada, no pasa nada. Why social media is important and why do you need to invest your time in order to take care of it? So I mentioned, I mentioned it already before that obviously it's a great place to look for creatives. But another aspect is that clients or potential clients are looking on social media for potential photographers and people, creative people uh, to do the jobs, to do the assignments. So if your portfolio is neat and kind of like straightforward, you only keep things which they supposed to be, so only your photos, no private life, then it's much easier for them, for the clients, uh, to hire you and to see what's your style uh, and only kind of like determine what's important, what's the chunk. So my advice is, my, so keep on your newsfeed, on your in your portfolio, Instagram or Facebook, only things which are important for your work. It's good to separate them. So if you've got, if you like to, let's say, showcase your personal life, create another account or put these things into stories instead of the main chunk of uh, any social media. I'm talking about Facebook or Instagram. Recently, I've been to Barcelona to a portfolio review and I realized how important it is to have a good and neat Instagram feed or a Facebook account. Creative directors showed me how little time they spent on browsing and looking for a photographer uh, for an assignment. They literally look at the account, they scroll through your Instagram feed or Facebook feed, and they've got five up to 10 seconds at most to decide whether you're good or not good for the job. So imagine putting all of this, I don't know, personal stuff in there, uh, they won't be interested because this account will be confusing for them. So try to think about, try to put yourself in the client's um, shoes and look at your portfolio, whether it's actually straightforward. Do you show in your newsfeed what would you like to work, what you would like to do, the style and everything. It's quite important. Killer. This is a killer look. Love it. Mm hmm uh-huh. Love it. I think we've got it. That's it. At the end, amazing. House, housewife gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. It looks so like... Yeah, have you seen that show, Why Women Kill? Why Women Kill? No. Okay, let me do one headshot without... No, just, just this one. No, no, no. Just, just stand here. Stand here and just look at me, okay? Just really, really simple, okay? And maybe sideways slightly mm -hmm. and look at me here. Here you can see the third setup with my beautiful Laura. I decided here to use only natural light. She's in a kind of tiny chapel, so she's all shaded. And around her, there is a sun bouncing from the floor. It's a beautiful and easy light to photograph. I don't put any other strobe or anything. 
I think this is far enough, okay? So let me just see what I did here. So I'm trying to pose her by the, by the door. I'm trying different poses here. Instantly, I'm happy with the light. This is such an easy light because on the sides, basically I've got two black uh, walls which create kind of like shadows on my model's face. And in front, the sun on the, on the floor and the buildings um, works as a big softbox. And I'm doing a lot of kind of like poses here. Let me just do it quicker. I'm directing her. And then at some point I decide, okay, I'm happy with the light. I'm happy I'm staying here. So I'm using passport for colors, just to be sure later that everything is accurate. Okay, again, I'm doing a lot of posing here, full body, crops, American, or like cropped below the knees. Okay, nothing interesting. And here I decide, okay, so let's move back into the shade uh, inside the chapel. So obviously it's underexposed and I'm going to make a correction on my, on my exposure. Easy as that. Here we go. Correction made. And I keep shooting. So I'm directing the model. She poses absolutely fabulously. The only thing I need to tell her just to prolong her legs because she can't see herself. And with such a long legs, I think she needs a bit of help. And I think there is nothing interesting happening later on. Uh, there are more and more photos, the same setup. Oh, here we go. This is an interesting thing. Let me show you be, uh, between this one and this one. So this is when the sun hides um, kind of like behind the uh, cloud. And you can see straight away, I'm on automatic auto balance. Well, balance, color balance, yes. So what happens is just decides to turn my scene into blue. And that's why it's so important to use color checker passport because you can uh, correct everything in post. You can just create profile and can just make sure these colors are uh, even and not like bluish here, reddish here. And I carry on. And I'm pretty happy with the setup so I don't do, I don't shoot too many pictures. So now we're going to shoot this gorgeous, beautiful pink dress. It's huge. I have no idea how to how to even photograph it. It's so big, so I need to kind of like figure out how to frame it. And we're going to use only natural light and use this tiny cave, like a I don't know indoor place, as a like kind of like hidden place. Yes. Yeah? So outside there is every, everywhere there is sun. It's going to bounce and it's going to uh, bounce back at the model with natural soft light. So let's see how we do it. Come on. Wow. That's stunning. That's stunning. Let me just get the shot. Beautiful. Stunning. Keep looking at me. Keep looking at me here. Beautiful. And your face like this. That's beautiful. Here you can see the next setup. I think it's the fourth one. Uh, again, it's the same light. So I'm using kind of like a tunnel, tiny tunnel with natural light. And as you can see, I brought this sofa with me. Sometimes it's important to kind of, kind of like do your own setting, move around things in order to create some beautiful effects. And as you can see, my model is all in on the sofa. I'm, tr I'm struggling with the, um, with the huge dress. Uh, I'm trying to pose her. There are no changes in terms of the exposure. I'm instantly happy with the light. It didn't change from the uh, previous setup. With the whole process of helping me, my assistant Dorota. She's my uh, dear friend and she knows me very well. This is quite important because she knows what's in my head and sometimes she's actually helping to kind of like um, warm up the model and she's also thinking about some new poses um, sometimes she spots some details which are supposed to be changed. As you can see, I, I do different crops, 
nothing new happening. I will be changing also the dress, the direction of it. I'm shooting with 50 millimeters all the way through the shoot. Even portraits, I feel that it somehow elongates her body a bit more. I just like this like long look. The huge pink dress, she's posing, she's absolutely gorgeous. The model, I mean. Then she's, she's, she's giving me her own poses. And sometimes, even, even if I don't like the poses, I let the model to kind of like do them so she feels comfortable. And I never tell the model, oh, this, this doesn't look right or something is wrong. I just tell, oh, let's change something, okay? I'm trying to be positive on the, during the photo shoot. Again, you, you've seen here uh, using me a color checker passport. And again, a lot of photos. There is not many interesting things happening here. Well, besides the huge pink dress, which as you can see, we're changing the direction. I'm also deciding uh, whether to open the back gate or close the gate. Some headshots, portraits. But again, only with 50 millimeters. I'm not changing to 85. It's just a little bit kind of like wider. Okay, and this shot, I'm pretty happy with the uh, back pose and I think I'm going to choose one of these pictures. And I think this is it from the setup. Colors are really important to me. So is a good quality monitor. I use BenQ. Let me tell you a funny story. So two years ago, 2019, I'm doing workshops here in Spain. And I tell my students, you need to take part in photo co competitions. Then I get back home and I think, so when was the last time actually I took part in any competition? The same day, my friend, ambassador of BenQ, Piotr Piontek, uh, puts a story that there is a competition organized by BenQ. So, I'm not thinking about anything. I put a picture out there, I upload a picture, and I forget about it. So, imagine my surprise. Three months later, I won a competition and I also won a monitor SW270C. Also, I won a workshop in Holland. Because of this competition, I got to know their products better. And at this time, they were releasing their new flagship monitor called SW321C. It is absolutely amazing. I've got it since then, not long after the competition. It is 4K resolution, 32 inches and Adobe RGB. As important a good monitor is, the same importance I would put to calibration. Regardless of the monitor you, you possess, you have, uh, calibration is a must. So it's really important for me as a fashion and beauty photographer because colors are need to be really precise and really accurate. I am sure that the final colors are the same as the product. And let me tell you that even if you're not shooting fashion or beauty, is it a good habit to calibrate your both camera and monitor? Basically, you start from the same point, the same base, and then even if you add any color grading, you've got your final effect very consistent. We start from monitor calibration, which I try to calibrate every three months or before every bigger assignment. To calibrate your screen, you need color meter. Before it was known as x i1 Display Pro, which currently you can find under a new name, under a new brand, Calibrite. This calibrator works with software BenQ Palette Master but we still choose x ray device. The program calibrates your monitor to generally recommended settings, where I only set up different brightness, depending whether I'm going to use it for internet or printing, or where the photos are going to be used. During calibration, the device will set up everything for you. If you'd like to calibrate your laptop or your monitor doesn't have a calibration software, then you use one included with a Color meter.
I think the chairs, I think so, they're a bit crazy idea, but because she's such a beautiful, in such a beautiful gown, it can actually work, this kind of like contrast between beautiful, gorgeous dress and a girl in dress, beautiful makeup with these like um, stuck chairs. Yeah? Let's see how it goes. I will need to tackle the light here because I've got very strong light coming from the, uh, from the window. I might need to bounce it back with the light as well, so it's a little bit more balanced. Let's see, I will test it and see how it goes. Sometimes in fashion, you do crazy things. And however they talk, bad or good, is good for you. You, sh you know what? I'm not even, if she sits down, it's not even really visible. Yeah, again. Something like between a bride and a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Shall we just slightly maybe because this this leg is so maybe put like um, layer it, layer it. Light is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's layered. I love this. I love the pose when you're actually kind of like covering your uh, piece of your hair, like this side of your face. This just balances my, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't care, look, this way, or, but don't do it too, ma too much, okay, at the beginning. I think it's great. The princess and the pea. Princess and the pea, yeah, exactly. Okay, give me one more, and then we're going to do, let me see, mm-hmm. The light will be changing, so we'll need to adjust on the go too much, maybe on the face. The hair, the, the hand is too much. Okay, just put it somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I don't, I don't mind where. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hold it there. I go like I don't care. Look again. Okay, let me do color checker. So during a photo shoot, I use color checker passport photo too. You can see that I'm using an X Rite color checker but now it's actually under a new brand, under a new name, uh, which is called Calibrite. So what do we need to do in order to calibrate with Passport? I'm going to explain you just general idea, and later in the post-production session, I'm going to show you exactly how am I creating a profile in post-production. So I capture this Passport with a model on every set, whenever the light is changing, or whenever I change my lenses. This is enough to make sure that your colors are accurate regardless of what you're going to do later in post-production. Okay, and slightly turn your face a little bit this way and kind of like look. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three, beautiful. Okay, maybe I'm going to slightly go down with this light. I'm just looking. A little bit less and more of this. Okay, let me see, one, two, three, beautiful. So what I'm doing, I'm layering the light. Still, it's too much. Okay, let me see, this is nice. Hold it, beautiful. I love the pulse, we're not gonna change anything. Is it not nicer when it's actually darker? I feel it's nicer, it has more like on the yeah. face, no? Yeah. Like I, th I think just it has like on the, on the verge. I just need her face to exactly. As you probably noticed, I work during my photo shoot tethered. What does it mean? I use a wire connected from my camera to my computer. What does it do? I'm connected to my laptop by a wire and I can see my photos instantly coming to my computer. There are high resolution raw files. It helps me a lot to view my pictures and to judge them much better. Mm -hmm. This is nice, okay. And even like lying down now on your knees, this is absolutely going to be amazing. So kind of like your look. 
Just slide your face towards me. That mean, that makes any sense. Yes, that's it. That's it. Hold it. Beautiful. That's amazing. Yes. Can you just check whether the light is... Just double check it. Maybe it's slightly too dark. Beautiful. And slightly turn your face this way towards the light. So somehow like... It's too artificial. Which one? No, I'm just saying this part. <laughs> like it doesn't, if it looks like it fell naturally, if it looks like it plays there. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're still fixing some things. Dress, but the pose is amazing. Okay. Just a bit, okay? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I think this is a, wow, perfect. Beautiful. I love this uh, angle of your face. I just don't like this, this hand here necessarily, so just put it down. I don't care, look. Beautiful. Just your eyes slightly towards me, so they're not going away. So it, I can't see only like white of, of your, mm -hmm. this is nice. Mm -hmm. Go for it, beautiful, beautiful. Stunning. That's amazing. And one more time, I'm just going to slightly add a little more power. Hold it there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm just checking, checking, checking. Mm -hmm. Stay there. We'll do a few close up here, okay? Stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. This way. Now I think I'll need to, um, for the close up, I need something a little more better light. Oh. It's okay, we lost something. Jeszcze dodatkowo proszę ci jeszcze troszeczkę niżej to światło, okay? Bo mi się wydaje, że ono mi nie nie łapie catch light. And this is my problem. I don't have a catch light in her eye. So that's why the left eye is slightly dead. Uh huh. That's it. Hold it there. This is nice. Yeah. You just need to move around in order to, let's see, maybe somehow like this. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's it. Beautiful. Hold it. Beautiful. Let me just go closer. Keep looking at me. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Slide towards me, your face, towards me. That's it. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. And give me one looking like towards the light. No, because your neck, it won't work. Maybe even lean forward slightly. So on that, that's it, but a little bit, not too much. I lost this like casual look. I really liked it, but you were too slumped in the chair. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Hold it, beautiful. And now look at me. Gorgeous, and just lean your, mm -hmm. beautiful. I think this might be my look. I'm not sure because I'm already tired. Everyone is tired. Hold it, beautiful. Gorgeous. One more time. And now quickly close up, okay? Headshot. Sit like this. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Look away slightly towards the light. So somewhere there, that's it. Not so up, not so up. Just mind, mind your eyes that I can see too much of whites, okay? That's, I love how you twisted your hands. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then exaggerate. Exaggerate. Beautiful. I need some feedback, guys. Somehow can, someone can just take a look yeah. at the light. Beautiful. Can you give me something like this with the hands somewhere here, but not touching your face? I love your pissed off look. Like, look at me like, really, really. I've got a hair touching your lips. Mm hmm Okay, stay there. Just touch. So you're not playing like this. They're kind of like somewhere here or here on the other side. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there because I need to focus. One, two, three. Amazing pose. Hold it, hold it. I want again. I want it again. Sorry, I'm just going to torture. We're going to have Vogue pose. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Um, Dorota, I need your help. I need the other lenses. Stay there. Don't even breathe. I'm loving it. Close your eyes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'm quickly. Yes. Okay. I'm all sweating. This is not an easy job. 
but I love it. Open your lips, beautiful. Stay there and look at me. And the same thing just down with your hands here. So somehow that, this is only headshot, okay? So you can come like hide, yeah, hide here. Uh-huh. Beautiful. And stay here. Amazing. And look at me. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry, but it was I think it was worth. Okay, last one quickly. I think outdoors. Okay. We need to have a really quick quick change because what's happening, our sun is dying. So like really dress, we're going to let her let her choose, okay? Choose whatever you you like. Okay, and I'll find the place, okay? So we're happy with the results. Okay guys, here we are at our with our fifth setup. Uh, I built some kind of like uh, scenery behind me. So I went to this, um, this is actually a library and I decided to stack these chairs on top of each other. I thought she's going to be like a princess, kind of, uh, with this like, a, I don't know, a bit dirty and uneven background. I quite like the idea. Okay, so first of all, I'm exposing to the background, to the ambient light. And let's see what I do. Obviously, I add a strobe on the other side. So on the right hand side, a big umbrella to balance the light. And I'm testing it, I'm adjusting. In the meantime, my team, so my stylist is helping me out with the dress. They're looking uh, right away at the monitor and they're deciding, oh, does it look good? Does it look okay? Uh, again, I'm using Passport to uh, correct my colors later in post-production. And I carry on with this setup, with this light. I'm really happy, yes? Mm, different poses, nothing interesting happening. In terms of colors, uh, I really like this blue against a brownish color. Uh, the green behind the windows doesn't necessarily fit any harmony, but what I'm going to do in post-production Either, either I am going to change slightly tint of it or I'm going to add a complementary color to my greens in my shadows. I'm going to decide later. Stylist here decided to use this uh, flowy, delicate dress with very um, thick and kind of like bold gloves and this foil on her face. Um, everything is from different designers so the job of the stylist is kind of like to pair the outfit. So he's got obviously a dress and all the accessories he's choosing by himself. The model here is already tired. It's very hot. Mm, this is actually already like the sun is setting, but there is a lot of humid. Everyone is very tired. As you can see, even the pose, and I like these poses. I really like that she's kind of like slumped on the chair. And she's like, she's got this look, I don't care. Just actually pretty fits to my idea. And I'm going to fast forward, color checker again, because I'm going to show you again something maybe interesting. Here we go. I'm slightly changing, changing my angle. So I'm going towards my light and my sun behind the window is going to be my backlight. I'm just exploring different angles. Here we go. So the sun coming through the window and my light in front of the like straight, um, my light straight to, to the model's face, yeah? And I think I carry on shooting like this and no more poses. So headshots as well. And later on, I will need to choose the strongest images. I'll need to put them together from the whole shoot and decide which one uh, will go better, or like which one will create a dynamic and interesting story. Sun is coming down, so we need to be quick. I'm not, not even taking my laptop or anything, because I know that I've got like literally 10, 15 minutes until it goes down. Uh, I need to hurry up basically and take my shots. The light is absolutely beautiful. I really like white on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, more. I'm just going to hide in be between and use um, and use these bushes as a <laughs> first foreground. Beautiful.
any other uh, place uh, you can think of, think, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the wood will translate to the wooden, uh, yes, I think so. And still there are some beds, so. Uh huh. And stay there. That's it, beautiful. Yeah, that's perfect. Let me see, let me see a little bit less. Hold it. Beautiful. Uh huh. Just play with the sleeves. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. And give me like really simple ones, so maybe sideways and just look at me. Mm hmm. Uh huh. You know what? I want you to sit down on this. Maybe something like this. Awesome. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay. Up, up, up. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Up, up, up. Gorgeous. Okay, stand up. I want as many poses as possible because I feel that the last one, we've got such an easy light that the light, the light is gorgeous. So I can quickly change on a fly and I'm giving myself a lot of options in order to fill and to make my story dynamic later. So I don't have the same poses. Okay, so I'm just trying to make as many as possible now. Beautiful. Especially that the light is so easy. Mm -hmm. This is nice. I love it. Gorgeous. And just kick the, kick the leg. One more time. One, two, three, kick. Maybe with the hand. One, two, three. That's it. One, two, three, go. Beautiful. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I love it. I love it. But with the, with the leg, like... Uh-huh. Bend the leg, bend the leg. This is the, this, this definitely pose we didn't have. Even more. Can you hold with both hands and kind of like lean back? Something what's safe, obviously. <sighs> Ready for you whenever you are. That's stunning. Okay, let's go down and let's maybe jump in over there, okay? Somehow. I want to just, just a scene for a second. I don't know, however you feel comfortable there. Standing, sitting. <sighs> or maybe even with the leg like this, look. And just, no? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Just give me your hair on the other side. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's it. Beautiful. So I'm trying to give myself as many poses as possible. Beautiful. Mm hmm. Uh, Dorota will need a bit of this uh, light over there because I like this shot for the headshot. But just need the um, a white screen over there. Extra. And look back at me. That's amazing. Your eyes are exactly the same color as the background. Okay, and just sitting like this, turn your face towards me here and just look at me here, okay? I'm just going to adjust it. Mm -hmm. Okay, close your eyes because your face is already melting, I know. Last shots. We almost made it. Ma uh, made it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And look at me, beautiful, absolutely stunning. Uh huh. And just give me one hand just like this here, somewhere touch slightly. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Stay there, beautiful, amazing. One more time, hold it there, like this more. Mm -hmm. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Stunning. Guys, I think we made it. Yes, it's a wrap. Yay! Well done. Woof! Need help? No. Yes, we've got it. Don't break your leg now. Okay. <laughs> Please. Woo! Okay. Give me five. Give me five. Yes. And give me five. Woo! -hoo! Well done, everyone. Oof. It's been a really long day. Hot day. Yes, uh, thankfully the last setup was the easiest one. Light is absolutely beautiful because this, the sun is setting down. Uh, we've chosen very natural background, a bit of wood and a bit of like green around. Um, so I had a lot of angles and I made sure I've, I just photographed the model around, like literally around her and I love it. I hope you will love it too. Here's our last set. The sun is setting and I've got actually, I think around 10 minutes until it's 
hides behind the trees. So my decision is to uh, take the camera, run to the set, find the set and shoot without uh, tethering, without kind of like taking my uh, equipment, my monitor or my laptop. Um, and because the clothing, the outfit is white, I decide for this duotone where I have got only browns and oranges and only green. Um, so the colors are quite close to each other, uh, but it still kind of like nicely relates to the whole story. A bit of green, but these wooden um, beds by the um, swimming pool work really well. I want to show you why I'm posing this girl in this exact way. I mean like her, uh, if you look at her face, the shadow on the right hand side uh, builds, this, builds this kind of like mm, nice, how to say it? The shadow on the right hand side builds a nice balance between the right and left side of her face. Mm, I'm posing her on purpose, kind of like side to the sunlight mm, to create a bit of shadow, that's it. I think it looks interesting and I'm going to show you I'm just browsing through next one. Here we go. So this is the shot I did while the sun was behind me, behind my back, uh, setting, yes. And I think it's basically too flat. So that's why I decided to shoot from the side in order to get this nice um, feel. I hope you like it as, as me. And then I'm trying different poses as well, just to make sure I fill my story with uh, some interesting and dynamic uh, crops. My model is delivering until the end, like absolutely fabulously. I'm really happy. She's so tired. The whole crew is tired, but uh, she's keeping positive until the very end. Mm, here we go, some poses. And also I'll head, I will do some headshots at the end, but I think that's it from the interesting point of view. So this is the end of our digital masterclass. I hope you enjoyed the whole process and what we prepared for you with the whole team. Please follow me on my social media. Uh, you will see more photos com coming from today's shoot. And also, next video is going to be about editing and post-processing the pictures we've taken today. I invite you to see the next video. Looking forward to it. See you.